Do you ever find yourself editing a video and your timeline is chugging along, you're dropping frames, and your program even crashes on you? I have, and it is extremely frustrating. But what if I told you there were ways to significantly reduce the chance of that happening and speed up your timeline? In this video, I'm gonna show you five ways to not only speed up your computer, but to also spare you from the aggravation of those sluggish timelines. Thank you to Mac Paul for partnering with me on this video. More on them in a moment. And also in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to do this in Adobe Premiere, DaVinci Resolve, as well as Final Cut Pro. So the first way and the most surefire way to speed up your timeline is to adjust the preview quality of your timeline. And in Final Cut Pro, you're gonna go over here to view where it says quality, you're gonna click on better performance. So on this clip in Final Cut Pro, I added two layers of noise reduction as well as a text layer. But whenever I change the playback quality to better performance, it is a whole lot smoother playback. In DaVinci Resolve, I did some color grading as well as added a few titles. And to adjust the playback quality in DaVinci Resolve, you're gonna go up to the top where it says playback, timeline proxy resolution, and to start out, just turn it on to half. And if that doesn't do the trick, go ahead and turn it down a quarter. In Premiere Pro, you're gonna look in the bottom right corner of the viewer window, and you're gonna see this drop down menu that says full. This gives you four different options to change the playback quality. The best way to start, I think, is a quarter. So turn it down to one quarter, and that already made a huge difference. Working with lower picture quality can significantly speed up your timeline, but one downside is that the overall quality being lower makes it harder to color grade and notice some of the finer details in the edit. But it definitely helps, especially if you're trying to get an edit done, and this can be a great way to stop your timeline from chugging along. The second way, and honestly my personal favorite way, is to utilize proxies. This way allows you to preserve most of the quality of the footage and can also be used in succession with lowering the preview quality if your computer demands that. It basically transforms your footage into a more optimized media format that your computer prefers to work with. The process of converting to proxy does take a little bit longer depending on the beefiness of your computer, but honestly, if it saves you more time in the long run, it might be worth it to go ahead and convert your footage to proxy media to have a whole lot smoother editing experience. So in Final Cut Pro to enable proxy media, what you're gonna do is drag and select all of the clips that you want to convert into proxies, right click on it, click transcode media, and then select the box that says create proxy media. I like to use ProRes proxy, then click okay, Final Cut Pro is going to do its job, convert them into proxies, and then when you're done, you're going to want to go up to View and Media Playback, you're going to want to select Proxy Only. DaVinci Resolve, Final Cut Pro, as well as Premiere Pro are kind of similar in the ways that you create proxy media. DaVinci Resolve specifically, you're going to select all the clips, right click, go down to where it says Generate Proxy Media, and it will go ahead and start doing that for you. And then to be able to utilize the proxy media in DaVinci Resolve, you're going to go to Playback, Proxy Handling, and then make sure Prefer Proxies is selected. And in Premiere Pro, you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna select all the clips that you're gonna use, right click, go down to where it says proxy, click create proxies. And since I'm using an Apple computer, I like to click QuickTime. And then you can go and choose the quality of the proxies that you wanna use. I suggest going with a medium resolution. And if your computer can handle a little bit more, then go with the high resolution. So then Premiere Pro is gonna do its job, create the proxies, and then attach those files to the media in your timeline. The third way is to manage your cache and temporary files that your editing software likes to hang on to. Clearing your cache and temporary files regularly can free up your disk space and improve your computer's performance. So if there's a project that you're not working on or that you worked on in the past, some Sometimes those cache and temporary files will still be on your hard drive and computer. So if there's a library that you know you're not working with, it's good to go ahead and delete all those render files and proxy files to free up that disk space. So let's say I'm done working with this project in Final Cut Pro. One way to do this is to go to File, Delete Generated Clip Files, click Delete Optimized Media and Delete Proxy Media. Then you're going to click OK. But honestly, my preferred way to do this is to go to the library file that you have on your hard drive, right click on it and click Show Package Contents. Inside of there, you're going to click on the event that you've been working on. For me, it's 221.24. And here where it says render files, original media, transcoded media, I like to select those three, drag to the trash bin, and then delete those. In DaVinci Resolve, you're going to go up to playback, delete render cache, and you can select to manage all cache data, select one specifically that you want, and then clear it. Or you can go to playback, delete render cache, and then just select all. In Premiere Pro, you're gonna go to Settings, Media Cache, and then right here, you're gonna see Remove Media Cache Files. Go ahead and click Delete. Delete Unused Media Cache Files. Click OK. 
and there you go. That should free up a whole lot more hard drive space on your computer, as well as allow your computer to run a lot more efficiently whenever you're working with different projects in your editing software. The fourth way is to close unnecessary background processes. Just like your computer slowing down with unnecessary render and cache files, having too many applications open in the background can also bog down your system, but specifically affect memory or RAM. Editing softwares tend to use a lot of RAM, so you need to be able to feed it as much as possible to stop your program from crashing or dropping frames whenever you're editing. So it's best to close unnecessary browser tabs, messaging apps, or any other non-essential applications. So in Windows, you can utilize the Task Manager, but in Mac or Apple computers, you can utilize Activity Monitor to locate any programs that are utilizing too much of your system's memory. And tip number five is to optimize your project organization. Something that I overlooked in the beginning of my editing journey was to have an organized file structure. Consolidate and organize media in a logical directory structure, delete unused assets, sequences, and projects to streamline your editing environment and then also keep everything in one location, or for example, keep it on one hard drive. This, in my opinion, can probably affect the speed of your editing software because instead of it having to find different files across different hard drives or different folders on your computer, everything is located in one consolidated place. But not only speeding up your software, it can help you locate and find the files that you need for your project to help you save time on your edits. But what if I told you that there was a software that could instantly free up your RAM, help you delete unnecessary junk on your computer, monitor malware and viruses and so much more? Well, there is, and it's called Clean My Mac X. Clean My Mac X is a software for Apple computers that can help keep your computer running like new. From freeing up gigabytes of space by deleting old and unused files, freeing up RAM, removing malware, as well as uninstalling unneeded applications, Clean My Mac X is my personal go-to application if I want my computer to run as smooth as butter. And I will never promote a product that I don't personally use or recommend. And I've been using Clean My Mac X since 2021, so almost three years now. And I can stand by its effectiveness in keeping my Mac, well, clean. The software itself is intuitive and everything is laid out for you. You can start with their smart scan to get a nice and thorough scan of your Mac, and that will help identify all of the necessary steps you need to do to get your Mac running like new. It will help you delete old files, scan your Mac for viruses, and show you any necessary tasks that may be helpful to get your Mac feeling like it's brand new out of the box. If you want to get more nitty gritty, there are multiple sections within the application to help you fine tune your cleaning process. From cleanup, protection, speed, as well as uninstalling applications and having a view of all of the files on your computer. I personally tend to install a ton of applications on my computer and simply just dragging the application file to the trash bin doesn't necessarily delete all of the associated files with that application. The uninstaller on Clean My Mac X allows you to remove and uninstall an application as well as all of the unnecessary files for that application in a few simple steps. If you're interested in getting Clean My Mac X, I went ahead and linked my affiliate links in the description below so you can get started on cleaning your computer today. Thank you again to Mac Paul for partnering with me on this video. So hopefully these tips helped you have a better and smoother editing experience. For me personally, I've picked these up throughout the years and they've definitely helped me. And if they did help you, definitely let me know in the comments below and make sure to subscribe if you want to keep seeing my face in the algorithm. All right, I'll see you on the next one.